All right, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. Uh, a couple of days ago, I did a tutorial on the Move Duplicate tool, and I've been playing around with it a little bit and realized just how powerful it really is. So I really wanted to create something that would be a little bit more challenging with it. So I created this radar scope image, and we're gonna create this together, and you're gonna see just how easy it is using that tool and just how precise it is using that tool and just how time-saving it is using that tool. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to create a new document and we're just going to use this social media square. It's 1080 by 1080. Zoom out just a little. Let's put in our guides. Find the center of the document with snapping turned on. So there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is put in our background. We had a black background. Let's create a blank pixel layer. We'll come over to the flood fill tool. Make sure that we have black selected and we'll go ahead and drop that right in there and we've got our background. Uh, so the next layer would be the background grid. It was like a six by six grid. Uh, if we go back to the other image, you can just uh, see it faintly in the background there. So we'll make that next using the uh, new tool. So let's grab the pen tool here. We're going to cancel out the fill. I'm going to go to stroke, make it a bright green, and we're going to bring the width up to 0.6 pixels. And we'll make sure that the cap is a square. So with that done, we're going to come here to our upper outer left hand corner and click. Come down to the bottom, click again. And then we'll just take a look and see what we've got. We've got a faint green line here. Part of it is uh, just off the screen. So now we'll select that curve and we'll hit enter. And it brings up our move duplicate dialog. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and hit duplicate and we'll leave it at one copy right now. Now we know this is 1080 pixels across. Like we could do the math on our own, but what's really nice is you can just plug the math into the tool here and it will do it for you. So we'll come to horizontal and we're gonna go 1080 slash six and then hit enter. So that's gonna create 180, distance, 180 pixels of dis distance. Now we only have one copy here right now. So let's increase the number of copies up to six and we'll hit okay. So now if we take and select all of those, we can get and group them. And now let's just duplicate that group by hitting Command J. And we're going to rotate those around 90 degrees. And now we can take both of those groups, group those together, and we'll get and rasterize and trim those. And if we look, we've got a nice grid going on here. So let's just take and drop the opacity on those down to about 50%. All right, looking at our picture now, we need to add in some of these bigger circles. So let's go ahead and add in the outer circle first. So we'll come over here to the shape tool. We'll pick donut tool and snapping into the center here. We're going to hold command and shift and drag outward till we get the diameter, the outside diameter that we want. That looks pretty good right there. And then we'll go ahead and scale this in because we don't want it to be too big of a border. And now we're going to come up to the fill. We'll just grab the dropper tool and grab this green. And then we're going to come over to stroke and turn stroke off. So there's our first outer circle. Next, we need to make a slightly uh, smaller this circle in here. For that one, I am going to use the uh, donut tool again. We'll come in here, command shift hold, bring it out, make the inside diameter much smaller. So we've got our two circles here and let's go ahead and name these real quick so we don't uh, get confused here. This is the grid. This will be the outer circle. This will be the inner circle. All right, so now the next thing we need to create are our internal hash marks that we have at tenths and we also have them at hundredths. So let's grab our pen tool and we have no fill on this and we have a stroke of one. We're going to come right here at the very top, of this inner circle, click come down, click again, and we'll see that we have a single hash mark there. Let's make sure that it is centered exactly on the document. And then we're gonna turn on our transform origins and we're gonna take that origin point and drag it down to the center of our document so it snaps in place. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna bring up our dialog box again. And so now what we're gonna do is we know that we need to go around the clock with this and there are 36 of these, but let's just duplicate it with one and let's change the rotation here to negative 10. 
make sure we got it the way we want it. Now just we need to increase the number of our copies and walk it right around and we can see how it snaps perfectly to where it needs to go. Click OK. And now it's created all these layers for us. So let's get and group all these together. And we'll call these tents. All right, so let's open up that group there. Let's grab this very top one, which should be the very top center one. And we're gonna option drag it right outside of this group into its own layer. And we're gonna amend this a little bit. We're gonna make it a little bit shorter. So let's come down here to the uh, pen tool and switch to the node tool. Grab this bottom node right here. We're just gonna drag it up eh, probably about halfway, let go. And now we're going to, with that layer selected, hit enter, brings up the dialog box again. Now these are hundredths, so there's 360 of them. So basically we need to rotate one degree. So we'll rotate negative one. We can see it right there. The origin point is still around the center since we copied. So now all we do is need to increase the number of copies, walk it right around until we get to there. We made 359 copies. We're gonna go ahead and click OK, and it creates all these layers. So let's grab that top layer, scroll all the way down to the bottom, to the last curve, since we named the other ones. Come down here, shift click, and we will group these together, and we'll rename these to hundredths. So it's really starting to tape shape here, and this would have been probably the most tedious part of this build. So let's go ahead and add in our inner circles first. So for this, we're gonna grab the ellipse tool and grab stroke, make sure we're using this green color right there. And we're gonna stroke that same thing at 0.5. So we're gonna to come to the center, command and shift, and we'll drag out our first small circle, click off. Let's make another one. And then we'll make one more. So there we go, we've got our inner circles or our inside circles. Let's group those together. And we'll call these center circles. So next thing we need to do is create these bigger quarter hash marks. So we'll grab our pen tool again. This time we're going to make the stroke a little bit bigger. Let's go with a uh, three pixel stroke or four pixel stroke on this one so we can really see it. And we're going to come up here to the top. And we're going to click, come down here to this circle right here, click. And we've got a nice big circle there. Let's zoom in on that and make sure we clean it up the way we want it. This bottom node is sticking down just a little bit. So let's Grab this bottom node, drag up, there we go. Zoom back out. First thing we need to do is move the origin point down to the center of the document. And that's very important whenever you're doing any rotations around the center. So now that that's done, we can hit enter, bring up our dialog box, hit duplicate, and we're gonna change our rotation to 90 degrees. And then we're just gonna increase our number of copies to three, hit okay. And we'll get and group those, and we'll call these large hash. So now what we need to do is create our uh, radar sweep, you know, the active part of your radar. We're gonna go to our shape tools here and let's select, for this, let's select the pie tool. Let's make sure that we've got fill and stroke selected on this one. And we'll make sure that the fill is the same color as everything else, our stroke is already hot. So let's come to the center of our document, hold down shift and command, and we're gonna drag out and we're gonna drag it right to the uh, edge of this inner circle there. And then what we're gonna do is bring this around to here and maybe bring this around to here. We don't want a big, big area there. So that's gonna be our sweep area. So we need to separate these though from each other because one of them has a stroke and the other one will have the fill and you're gonna see what I mean right here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, Command J, and let's turn off this bottom layer first and we'll make the top layer hot. So on this top layer, Let's come to fill and we'll turn the fill off so that we can just see the stroke. And we're gonna click off for a second so we can see that stroke. And we've got a hard stroke there. I tell you what, let's make it stroke on that a little bit bigger. Let's bring it up to one, let's bring it up to two. All right, but we don't want that whole thing. We just really just want that top line. That's all we need. So for right now, let's turn off some of this other stuff here so we can see what we've got. We really just want this one line. So we're gonna go ahead and rasterize and trim that. And we're gonna get our eraser tool. And we're just gonna get rid of this uh, bottom line and the arc. We're just gonna leave it like that. We're gonna turn everything back on real quick. And now we're gonna take this lower pie and that one we're going to turn the stroke off. So we just have the inside, just the fill. And we're gonna get and rasterize and trim that as well. And now we want to uh, fade it out because if you ever look at a radar thing when it sweeps it uh it leaves a trace so let's we can do this with a mask let's come down here to the mask tool let's reset our colors real quick and we'll come to the gradient make sure we're painting on the mask 
and we're going to start at the center and drag out just to where we come up against that area there. That looks pretty good. And now it's also real hard down here at the bottom, so it would actually fade out as well as it's going around the clock. So we're going to again rasterize and trim this layer. Now we're going to add another mask to it. Grab the gradient tool, and this time we're going to drag from here down. Let's kind of do that. Now what I would do here is on this uh, this line here, I would fade it out a little bit, the upper border, so it's not quite so prominent. All right, so now that we have our sweep, we need to put our contacts in. You know, radar is always finding contacts. So let's come over to our brush tool, and we're going to make sure that we're painting again with that same green color. And we're going to reduce the size quite a bit and make sure that we have no hardness. Hardness is turned all the way down, flows at 100, and let's pop in... A couple of uh, contacts here. Actually, you know what we need to do? We actually need to make a blank pixel layer first there and pop some of these in here. So we'll have some contacts showing up. All right, so we've got our contacts in there. So now the next thing we need to do is create some additional hash marks, a little reticle marks in here. So we're going to come back to our pen tool and let's start here and let's create one between the center of this and the center of this. So. All right, so we've got one of those. We're going to bring the stroke down on those. That's kind of nice. We want that to be small as well. Let's go with 0.6 on that. Make sure that it has a cap on it there. So we've got one there. And what we can do with this one is we can now, we just real quickly, we're going to, uh, let's select it and we'll option shift and bring one over here and maybe one over here. Let's grab this node tool and we're just going to make this one a little bit smaller and we'll make this one a little bit smaller as well. All right, so let's take those three curves, group those together. We'll come to our origin, bring it into the center, make sure it snaps in place. And then with that group selected, let's hit enter. And we are going to do the same thing on this. We're going to go duplicate. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Make sure it goes where we want it to go. That's looking good. And then just we're going to add in two more copies of that. Click OK. And then we'll group all of those together. We'll call that reticle. And let's name this one contacts. And we'll rename this sweep line. And we'll rename this one sweep body. Okay, what are we gonna do next? I think the next thing we need to do is put in our faded green background. So we're gonna come all the way down here uh, we're just going to create it from scratch here. So we're going to come over here to, we're going to create a circle or an ellipse. Uh, we're going to make sure that we're painting with green. So let's make sure that the fill is green. We don't need a stroke on this. And we'll come over to the center of our document, snap in place, command shift hold. Let's drag out our circle. So it just sits underneath that big circle. We'll take and drag it down below our outer circle, but above our grid. And now with that selected, we can take and turn our opacity way down on that. So it's just barely giving us a hint of that green glow. Let's go with 15%. That's looking really good right there. All right, the last thing we're going to do to this right now is put in our numbers. And if we were doing these numbers, it would be a pain in the neck. But using this tool makes it ridiculously easy. So let's grab our artistic text tool. Let's come up here to this space between the outer circle and the inner circle. Let's drag out a letter and we'll make sure that it's green. And we're going to change the font to something a little bit smaller. I'm going to use this Apple Braille and I'm going to type in the number zero. Color's not right. And so what we'll do with that one is we're going to make sure that it is centered on our document horizontally. Then let's go ahead and drag that origin point down to the bottom or to the center, I'm sorry. So now that we've got it created, we're going to center justify it. And now we're gonna invoke our move duplicate tool. We're gonna to hit duplicate. We know that there's 10 degrees of increments here. So we're gonna rotate it negative 10 and that should put it directly over the 10 degree line. And now all we do is need to increase the number of copies. So we're gonna increase those copies all the way around till we get to 36. Make sure we go under, click okay. And now that created a bunch. So this will probably be the most tedious portion of this graphic is now what we're going to do, select the next one and we're going to double click on it and type in 10. And then we'll double click on the next one and type in 20. 
and we're going to do this all the way around the circle. So I'm going to speed this portion up. All right, so there we go. We've created a pretty complex graphic in a reasonably short amount of time using automation with the Move Duplicate tool. Again, the application with this tool is probably endless. I'm sure I could probably come up with a dozen more uh, examples of this, but this was a good one. This is one that normally uh, would have taken quite a bit of time to create. So anyway, if you got some value out of this, please like the video or think about subscribing to my channel for more tutorials like this one. And until next time, peace. Talk to you later. Bye.